Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm talking about the gap. The gap between your chest bone and your belt buckle and what this gap should do during your golf swing. So what am I talking about when I'm talking about the gap and why is that important? Well, what I'm talking about is the difference or the distance between the position of your chest bone and your belt buckle during the swing. Why is that so important? Well, it helps you to understand better the relationship between the movement of your upper body and lower body and to control the axis of your swing during the swing relative to the golf ball so that you're hitting the golf ball in the downswing, in the upswing, so that you're holding control over the golf club for longer in your golf swing. And it will show you relatively quickly if you understand the concept where you're going wrong, particularly in the sequencing of your golf swing. So let's get to it. If you actually think about hitting a golf ball out of the center of your stance with an iron, then in the address possession with the golf ball in the middle, then obviously your breast or your chest bone and your belt buckle are going to be pointing at the golf ball. But as you start your backswing, as you start to rotate your chest, there'll be some separation. And this will happen as you start to rotate your shoulders, rotate the club away from the golf ball without moving your hips. If you're somebody who takes the hips and the chest at the same time, then these lines will stay closer to one another. But at some time, you're going to actually see a separation between chest bone and the hips or, or the belt buckle. And this will carry on until the top of the swing where you have the largest gap in the backswing. As you're at the top of the backswing, then your belt buckle will be somewhere in between kind of the center and the trail foot. And depending on the amount of rotation you have in your chest, if you've got 90 degrees, then you will have the, the, the gap here between the belt buckle and the chest bone. And obviously the depth of your rib cage will depend how big this gap is. This gap should then get slightly larger at the very beginning of the transition because we're going to actually kind of sit in and start the transition with the lower body causing a little bit of separation. The gap will get minutely larger before it stays in that same distance and rotates as one back towards and through the ball. Your belt buckle should stop somewhere inside your lead heel and then as you carry on rotating with your upper body through impact you should have the feasing, feeling of squeezing the gap closed and this feeling of squeezing the gap closed is going to help you to keep pressure on the handle, keep lean on the golf club, get a better strike and more control over the club face. And this is basically what we're talking about when I'm talking about the gap. If I do that with an iron then where I'm more over the golf ball, then you will actually tend to see the main problems being that we are getting changes in this gap, primarily in the downswing. Either you're closing the gap too early, which would tend to lead to the feeling that you're either hitting too early with your arms and hands, or you're rotating your upper body earlier than your lower body, or you're not rotating your lower body at all. What could also happen is this gap could get wider because of a sliding of the hips or a tilting of the upper body. The actual gap will get bigger and therefore you'll be able to tell that something is going wrong. You want the feeling in the downswing with the exception of this very first movement and really we're talking about ten thousandths of a second that this movement takes, this separation. So for the majority of us, we don't really actually feel the gap getting wider. It's more of a feeling of me moving the gap towards and through the golf ball, keeping it the same size 
until impact where I have the feeling of kind of squeezing it closed while my hips have stopped rotating and my upper body is still moving. And this, as I say, will help me to keep pressure on the golf club. A lot of times what I'm seeing, especially when I'm working with my, my students in getting a little bit more uh, action in the right shoulder, getting the trail shoulder down, is that often we'll actually find that they're getting this going on and the gap is widening. Um, if you're somebody who's been trying to kind of cover the ball a lot, working on getting your upper body moving through the ball, there's obviously a chance that you're going to be closing this gap a little bit too early. And this is going to basically give you a very easy way of seeing with help of a video camera or even if you pop your iPad on the ground and put the, the selfie camera on, you'll be able to see yourself live actually making the movement. You might be able to actually see immediately that you're doing something wrong because you're not controlling this gap correctly. Now this is going to be the same for virtually every club in the bag, but it will look a little bit different with the driver simply because of the setup position. If you're setting up with the ball across from your lead toe and your, your, the stance wider, more tilt in your spine angle, then you're actually going to set up with your chest bone behind your belt buckle. And then this, is it, this extra width is going to actually mean that you're going to have a wider gap at the top of your swing, which will get even wider as you start down, coming into impact where you're starting to close it, but you won't close the gap to impact because obviously you had a gap before the, the swing even began. So it will look a little bit more, a bit different on the driver, but you see, especially with the driver, a lot of people will tend to get a little bit slidey with the driver because they started in tilt, they'll actually go into more tilt and this gap will get too wide and they are the people who are kind of blocking it right and flipping the club and snap hooking it. On the contrary, the majority of amateur golfers are trying to actually attack the golf ball with the upper body so they're closing the gap immediately in the downswing that's going to bring the club from out to in and give them a slice. So the gap can actually help you to see where the problem is in the sequencing. And by checking the gap on a regular basis, you will be able to actually tell if your golf swing is working correctly and whether you have control over your swing axis during the golf swing. That is the most important thing, keeping the relationship between the center of your chest and the golf ball consistent through the, goal, the golf swing is all about keeping good pressure on the golf ball and controlling club face. As ever, this is just another way of looking at the golf swing, another way of maybe um, checking and controlling your own golf swing with the help of a video camera, a mobile phone. You should be able to take slow motion pictures of your swing and you should be able to track your chest bone and your, your belt buckle and see whether you're keeping this gap correctly during the swing. I hope this helps you. If it does, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed to me yet, please do so. The little notification button will let you know the next time that I post a video. Keep safe, keep well. We'll be back very shortly with the next one. Bye-bye.